Welcome back everyone. For the last topic in this series, we're going to take a look at polymorphic components with React and TypeScript. It is probably one of the more complex concepts to understand as a beginner, but hopefully I can do a good job of breaking it down for you. It is something you don't need unless you're building a component library or a design system for your project at work. Having said that, it never hurts to know how it works irrespective of whether you'll be using it or not. Let's begin. For this example, within the components folder, I've created a folder called polymorphic. Within this folder, I've created a file test.tsx. The file contains a simple text component. Let me walk you through the code. First, we have the component props type. The text component will accept three props. Optional size, which can be small, medium or large. Optional color, which can be primary or secondary. And finally, children. In the component, we have one div tag and the assumption is that size and color are used to calculate the styles for the div tag. The children prop is rendered in the browser. In app.tsx, we can invoke the text component passing in the different props. Text component size is equal to large and the text is heading. Size is equal to medium. The children text is paragraph. Size is equal to small. Color is equal to secondary. And the text children is label. Now this would work, but there is one problem. Although I have one reusable component to render either a heading or a paragraph or a label, the underlying HTML element is the same, a div tag. And this for sure is not good for semantics. What we should be able to do is pass in another prop which controls what HTML element is rendered in the browser. For example, on the first text component, as is equal to h1. On the second, as is equal to paragraph. And for the third one, as is equal to label. We want this text component to behave like different HTML elements based on this as prop. Such a component is called a polymorphic component and in this video we're going to learn how to type that component. Let's go over this one step at a time. Our step one is obvious. We need an as prop which controls what is the element rendered in the browser. I'm going to start with as and this is optional and the type is string. That fixes the error in app.tsx. In our component, we can now destructure it and use it instead of the div tag. So children, comma, as, and within the component, const component is equal to the as prop or we default it to a div tag. This defaulting is because as is an optional prop. Now, instead of the div tag, we specify component. That completes our step one. But obviously, TypeScript is not happy. It's complaining about the component type. And I'm sure you would have guessed as well that the prop cannot be any random string. So for step two, let's fix this type of the as prop. We know it has to be a valid HTML element. But what is the type? Well, the correct type is react.elementType. If you now go back to app.tsx and clear out is equal to h1, and I type is equal to quotes. You can see the IntelliSense working already. 
I can now select H1. So we are making progress. Let's now move on to step three. At the moment, we are asking text component to render as H1 or a paragraph or as a label. But the component is not capable of handling the HTML element props. For example, a label will typically have a for attribute. If I were to add HTML for is equal to some ID, TypeScript throws an error. Let's fix this. We're going to begin by changing text props to text own props. And this is a common convention for this type of a scenario. We then define the text props type as a combination of text own props along with the HTML props it is supposed to accept. So type text props is equal to text own props. And then it should also include react.componentProps. But react.componentProps is a generic type. We actually need to figure out what is the HTML element whose props need to be combined with text own props. But if you think about it, the HTML element passed as the as prop could be anything. So what we need is a generic element type. And we begin with text own props. We pass in a generic type E, which extends react.elementType. And then instead of react.elementType for the as prop, we specify E. Next, we do the same for text props as well. We add a generic type E extends react.elementType. And for text own props, we pass in the same E and also for react.componentProps. But when we do this, there is room for name collision and duplicate types. For example, children might collide with children for a div tag. So we need to omit the keys that are specified as part of text own props. And we do that using the omit utility type. So right before react.componentProps, we add omit angle brackets, and this would be sort of the first argument. We then put a comma and then key off text own props. We also need to pass in the generic. So we now have all the types of this element except for the types that we have specified ourselves. Now on line 13 for our text component itself, we need to add the generic type. So export const text and before parentheses, angle brackets, E extends react.elementType. We assign a default element, which is the div tag. We pass in the same generic element E to text props. And when we do that, the TypeScript error for HTML4 prop is gone. TypeScript is happy again. If we were to specify HTML4 on an H1 text component though, TypeScript throws an error because HTML4 is not valid for an H1 tag. That completes our polymorphic component. If you were to take a look at the browser, you can see the text components have been rendered as an H1 tag, a paragraph tag, and a label tag. All this without TypeScript throwing an error. Like I mentioned earlier, Typing polymorphic components is pretty advanced and not something you would need on a regular basis. But it's always good to know there is a resource available for you and you can come back to this 
should a need arise in the project you're working on. All right, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.